Hey everyone, and welcome to Top Think. Today we're going to learn about seven things a psychopath will say to you. Now, let's begin. Number one, I can't stand drama. Much of what a psychopath says contradicts what a psychopath does. For example, psychopaths actively resent any drama that comes into their lives, and if you start an argument or confront them with a problem, they call you dramatic. They berate you with guilt and shame. They claim they don't want an ounce of drama in their lives. Yet a psychopath may be the most drama-heavy person you know. Every two seconds, they're stirring up trouble. They have more arguments than anyone you've ever met, and they're always at the center of every conflict. They talk behind people's backs. They pin friends against each other. They use guilt and shame to bully friends or partners into doing what they want. Uh, but here's the worst part. They don't want to talk about their issues. They aren't interested in solving any problems or even recognizing the drama in their own lives. When you bring up the subject, a psychopath accuses you of creating drama. They blame everything on you and they pretend like they are the victim of your bad attitude. But you know that's not true. You've seen the way they interact with other people and you know how much drama unfolds in their life on a daily basis. If this person really didn't like drama, they wouldn't have any drama to discuss. On the off chance they did, they'd be focused on solving the problem instead of making it worse. You wouldn't catch them gossiping, arguing, or exasperating their problems. Now, deep down, psychopaths crave a conflict-heavy environment. They complain about how much they hate drama, they blame all their problems on other people, but they secretly need conflict in their lives because it gives them a sense of power and control. So the next time someone says, I can't stand drama, take a look at their lives. If they're surrounded by conflict, you may be talking to a psychopath. Number two, you're too sensitive. The agenda of a psychopath is often an emotional roller coaster. One minute they're showering you with praise and flattery and the next they're ignoring your calls and giving you the cold shoulder. But what happens when you confront a psychopath about their ups and downs? Well, a psychopath uses many different phrases to manipulate other people, but few phrases are more common than this one. A psychopath will say something like, Why are you being so sensitive? Or, I don't like needy people. Suddenly, you feel guilty. You wonder if you're doing the right thing and you start to question your decisions. But that's exactly what a psychopath wants. This roller coaster of emotions is designed to make you feel crazy. A psychopath wants to control you by amplifying your insecurities. They want to lower your self-esteem and create sources of self-doubt, because the less faith you have in yourself, the easier it becomes to push their agenda. So if you know someone who's hot and cold, up and down, it's important to stay strong and believe in what you feel. You may decide to confront them about their inconsistency, but there's a good chance that they'll turn that confrontation on its head. They'll accuse you of causing problems, and they'll make you feel like everything is your fault. But don't let these people get into your head. Their accusations are designed to make you feel small, insecure, and uncertain. But if you start doubting yourself, you're giving a psychopath the control they're looking for. Number 3. I did nothing wrong. Psychopaths don't understand other people's perspectives. They project their own wants, needs, and desires onto other people, and they expect the people in their world to bend to their will. So what happens when a psychopath makes a mistake? Unless they hurt themselves, psychopaths never take responsibility for their failures. They insist that they did nothing wrong, they blame anyone but themselves, and they devise elaborate strategies to clear their own name. After stepping on someone's toes or getting in someone's way, most of us will apologize or figure out what we did wrong. But the thought never crosses a psychopath's mind. They refuse to acknowledge their mistakes and they don't apologize to other people. We see this behavior in all kinds of psychopaths, from normal, everyday people to the worst criminals in history. When they do something a regular person may regret, they don't take responsibility. They don't say they're sorry. They lash out or they run away. To put it simply, a psychopath doesn't care whether or not someone was wronged. The only wrongs they can process revolve around selfish wants and needs. A psychopath will never take your side. They don't care about how you feel, and they'll blame you for their mistakes without batting an eye. 
But they can experience shame. Psychopaths struggle to understand different perspectives, but they will experience a deep sense of shame whenever their egos are slighted. They don't feel bad when they inconvenience others, but they hold grudges against anyone who inconveniences them. So pay attention to anyone in your life who avoids responsibility. If they insist that they did nothing wrong, they may not be capable of admitting their mistakes. Number 4. I had to do it. Do you ever feel compelled to do something? Maybe you crave a specific food or yearn to go on vacation. We all have things that we want to do, but there aren't many things that we have to do. We have to eat, we have to breathe, we have to drink water, but that's about it. In the mind of a psychopath, their physical needs extend much, much deeper. They often describe their actions not as choices, but as compulsions. When you ask, why did you do something, they might respond, I had no other choice, or it had to be done. Psychopaths confuse their physical needs with their psychological desires. When they want something, they believe they are compelled to take action. In other words, it's not their decision anymore. It's not something they could avoid or ignore. Now, of course, a psychological desire is exactly that. It's psychological. They insist that there are no other options, but the truth is, a psychopath does what they want, when they want, no matter who pays the price. Number 5. You Don't Understand Me Psychopaths feel misunderstood by everyone they meet. They believe they're superior to the rest of the world. They glorify their ambitions, their behaviors, and their motives. And they insist that they are someone special, different, or unique. Because they feel unique, they don't believe anyone can properly understand who they are, what they want, or what they're going through. When other people try to understand them, they actively push them away. It's a self-serving habit that reinforces their already over-inflated egos. Uh, but that's not all. A psychopath uses phrases like, you don't understand me, or you just don't get it, to manipulate their friends or partners. We sometimes call this gaslighting. A psychopath will claim to be misunderstood, and that misunderstanding makes other people feel guilty or unsure. The psychopath forces their friends or partners to question their minds and memories, and once that happens, the psychopath has all the power. Ultimately, psychopaths aren't interested in relating to other people. They might say, you don't understand me, but they don't want to be understood. They want to boost their ego and push you around. They want to create a hierarchy in your relationship. In other words, they want to take advantage of you. Number 6. They deserved it. Psychopaths are not capable of empathy. When they hurt someone, they don't feel bad about what they've done, they don't understand tragedy, and they have no interest in making amends. Instead, they believe their actions are justified. To a psychopath, any action that benefits themselves is worth doing. Sometimes that means shamelessly manipulating someone in need. Other times, they steal from the people closest to them. In either case, a psychopath does not experience regret, empathy, or remorse. Instead, they feel powerful. So how do you know when someone is incapable of empathy? Well, most of the time, they'll tell you. Normally, when you hear bad news, you feel sorry for the people involved. If your friend got in a car accident, for example, the first thing you say is, are you okay? But the mind of a psychopath works differently. When something bad happens, they might say, they deserved it, or they had it coming. A psychopath doesn't think about the health and safety of other people. They aren't interested in the well-being of others. They don't care if something bad happens to another person, and they aren't afraid to admit it. Number 7. I'm the exception. Arrogance is another hallmark of a psychopathic personality. Psychopaths are obsessed with themselves. They believe the world revolves around them, and they have an extraordinary opinion of their own potential. Many psychopaths believe they're capable of ruling the world. Unsurprisingly, they believe they're immune to the rules, laws, and consequences that govern the rest of the population. You might hear a psychopath say something like, I'm the exception, or that doesn't apply to me. They expect everyone else to follow the rules while they do whatever they want. In some cases, a psychopath will ruin someone's life or destroy their relationship. They'll take advantage of other people and they freely manipulate their loved ones. Why? Well, because they believe they can. But what happens when the tables are turned? What happens when a psychopath feels powerless? 
Instinctively, they lash out. They can't believe that someone else would manipulate another person. They criticize and insult anyone who breaks the rules, but as soon as they see an opportunity, they'll do exactly the same thing. So if you know someone who thinks they're above the law, someone who believes they're the exception, not the rule, you may be talking to a psychopath. Hey, thank you for watching Top Think and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way.